Why was Ellen Johnson the only survivor of the Liberian coup? Conspiracy theories. Internationally known as Africa's Iron Lady is Nobel laureate Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, born Ellen Eugenia Johnson on 29 October 1938. She is a leading promoter of freedom, peace, justice, women's empowerment, and democratic rule. As Africa's first democratically elected female head of state, she has led Liberia through reconciliation and recovery following the nation's decade-long civil war, as well as the Ebola crisis, winning international acclaim for achieving economic, social, and political change. Born in Monrovia to a Gola father and crude German mother, she was educated at the College of West Africa. She completed her education in the United States, where she studied at Madison Business College and Harvard University. She returned to Liberia to work in William Tolbert's government as Deputy Minister of Finance from 1971 to 1974. Later, she worked again in the West for the World Bank in the Caribbean and Latin America. In 1979, she received a cabinet appointment as Minister of Finance, serving until 1980. Her political career After Samuel Doe seized power in 1980 in a coup d'etat and executed Tolbert, Sirleaf fled to the United States. She worked for Citibank and then Equator Bank. She returned to Liberia to contest a senatorial seat for Monserrato County in 1985, an election that was disputed. She was arrested as a result of her open criticism of the military government in 1985 and was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment, although she was later released. Sirleaf continued to be involved in politics. She finished in second place in the 1997 presidential elections, which was won by Charles Taylor. She won the 2005 presidential election and took office on 16 January 2006. She was re-elected in 2011. She was the first woman in Africa elected as president of her country. She won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2011 in recognition of her efforts to bring women into the peacekeeping process. She has received numerous other awards for her leadership. In June 2016, Sirleaf was elected as the chair of the Economic Community of West African States, making her the first woman to hold the position since it was created. While working at Citibank, she returned to Liberia in 1985 to run for vice president under Jackson Doe on the ticket of the Liberian Action Party in the 1985 elections. However, Sirleaf was placed under house arrest on August 1985 and soon after sentenced to 10 years in prison for sedition as a consequence of a speech in which she insulted the members of the Samuel Doe regime. Following international calls for her release, Samuel Doe pardoned and released her in September. Due to government pressure, she was removed from the presidential ticket and instead ran for a Senate seat in Monserrato County. In the 1985 elections, Samuel Doe and the National Democratic Party won the presidency and large majority in both houses. The elections were widely condemned as neither free nor fair. Sirleaf was declared the winner of her Senate race, but she refused to accept the seat in protest of the election fraud. After an attempted coup against the Doe government by Thomas Kwiwankwa on 12 November 1985, Sirleaf was arrested and imprisoned again on 13 November by Doe's forces. Despite continuing to refuse to accept her seat in the Senate, she was released on July 1986. She secretly fled the country to the United States later that year. Four days prior to the election sparked criticism from opposition parties with the Congress for Democratic Change candidate. Winston Tubman called the award undeserved and a political interference in our country's politics. Sirleaf called the timing of the award a coincidence and avoided mentioning the award during the final days of campaigning. Sirleaf garnered 43.9% of the vote in the first round, more than any other candidate but short of the 50% needed to avoid a runoff. Tubman came in second with 32.7%, pitting him against Sirleaf in the second round. Tubman called for a boycott of the runoff, claiming that the results of the first round had been fraudulent. Sirleaf denied the allegations, and international observers reported that the first round election had been free, fair, and transparent. As a result of the boycott, 
She won the second round with 90.7% of the vote, though voter turnout significantly declined from the first round. Following the election, Sirleaf announced the creation of a National Peace and Reconciliation Initiative, led by Nobel Peace Prize laureate Lima Bodhi, to address the country's divisions and begin a national dialogue that would bring us together. She took the presidential oath for her second presidency on 16 January 2012. Debt Relief From the beginning of her presidency, Sirleaf vowed to make a reduction of the national debt, which stood at approximately 4.9 billion US dollars in 2006, a top priority for her administration. The United States became the first country to grant debt relief to Liberia, waiving the full $391 million owed to it by Liberia in early 2007. In September of that year, the G8 headed by German Chancellor Angela Merkel provided $324.5 million to pay off 60% of Liberia's debt to the International Monetary Fund, crediting their decision to the macroeconomic policies pursued by the Sirleaf administration. In April 2009, the government successfully wrote off an additional $1.2 billion in foreign commercial debt in a deal that saw the government buy back the debt at a 97% discounted rate through financing provided by the International Development Association, Germany, Norway, the United States, and the United Kingdom. The discounted rate was the largest ever for a developing country. The country was deemed eligible to participate in the heavily indebted Poor Countries Initiative in 2008. In June 2010, the country reached the completion point of the 8 IPC initiative, qualifying it for relief from its entire external debt. That same month, the World Bank and IMWF agreed to fund $1.5 billion in writing off Liberia's multilateral debt. On 16 September, the Paris Club agreed to cancel $1.26 billion, with independent bilateral creditors cancelling an additional $107 million, essentially writing off Liberia's remaining external debt. Certainly found to prevent unsustainable borrowing in the future by restricting annual borrowing to 3% of GDP and limiting the expenditure of all borrowed funds to one-off infrastructure projects. Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC President Sirleaf addressed the 2008 General Conference of the United Methodist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. In 2006, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission began work with a mandate to promote national peace, security, unity, and reconciliation by investigating more than 20 years of civil conflict in the country. The TRC was formed through legislation in 2005 under the interim government headed by C. Jude Bryant. In their final report, issued in June 2009, the TRC included Sirleaf in a list of 50 names of people that should be specifically barred from holding public offices, elected or appointed for a period of 30 years for being associated with former warring factions. The proposed ban stemmed from her financial support of former President Taylor in the early years of the First Liberian Civil War. On 26 July 2009, Sirleaf apologized to Liberia for supporting Charles Taylor, saying, When the true nature of Mr. Taylor's intentions became known, there was no more impassioned critic or strong opponent to him in a democratic process than she. On 28 August, the legislature announced they must consult our constituents for about a year before deciding whether or not to implement the Commission's recommendations. During an appearance at the Council on Foreign Relations in 2010, Sirleaf argued that the implementation of the TRC's recommended ban would unconstitutionally violate her right to due process. In October 2010, the chairman of Sirleaf's Unity Party, Barney Sherman, argued that implementation of the recommendation would be unconstitutional, as Article 21 of the Constitution prohibits ex post facto laws. Sirleaf had broken no law by financially supporting Taylor that imposed a ban from public office as a penalty. In January 2011, the Supreme Court ruled in Williams v. Ta, a case brought by another person recommended for being banned from public office in the TRC report, that the TRC's recommendation was an unconstitutional violation of the listed individual's right to procedural due process and that it would be unconstitutional for the government to implement the proposed bans. 
gay rights. Following a speech made by United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in December 2011 that America's foreign aid would be used to promote the protection of gay rights, the issue of LGB rights became a significant political topic in Liberia. According to The Guardian, since Clinton's remarks, Liberian newspapers have published numerous articles and editorials describing homosexuality as desecrating, abusive, and an abomination. Liberian law made voluntary sodomy punishable by up to one year in prison, although it has not been used to prosecute anyone in several years. In February 2012, Bong County Senator Jewel Taylor proposed a bill that would carry a term of 10 years in prison for homosexual activity, while a similar bill was introduced in the House of Representatives. On 19 March, Sirleaf addressed the issue, saying that she would not repeal the current law but would also not sign into law either of the two proposed bills. Sirleaf added, We like ourselves just the way we are. We've got certain traditional values in our society that we would like to preserve. According to Taiwan Gonglo, Liberia's former solicitor general, if she tried to decriminalize the current anti-gay law, it would be political suicide. In a letter to The Guardian, Sirleaf's press secretary challenged the portrayal of her remarks in the media saying, there currently exists no law referencing homosexuality in Liberia, and as such the president could not be defending a law on homosexuality. The president is on record as saying that any law brought before her regarding homosexuality will be vetoed. This statement also applies to an initial attempt by two members of the Liberian legislature to introduce tougher laws targeting homosexuality. The letter added the status quo in Liberia has been one of tolerance and no one has ever been prosecuted under that law, and went on to hint at future possible liberalization, stating that the president thinks that with the unprecedented freedom of speech and expression Liberia enjoys today, our budding democracy will be strong enough to accommodate new ideas and debate both their value and Liberia's laws with openness, respect, and independence. The Guardian published a correction to its story. Nobel Peace Prize winner defends law criminalizing homosexuality in Liberia was updated to restore material cut in the editing process. The restored material clarifies the stance that President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is taking on laws concerning homosexuality in Liberia. That is, she refuses to dismantle the existing anti-sodomy law, while also saying she will refuse to sign two new bills that would toughen laws on homosexuality. The comments, letter, and clarification suggest that she considered the status quo for gay rights in Liberia to be one of de facto tolerance until the recent controversy and did not support decriminalization of homosexuality, but also refused to support further criminalization of homosexual acts which was being attempted in Liberia. She reaffirmed this view during an interview with Tony Blair. Administration. Following her victory in the 2005 election, Sirleaf pledged to promote national reconciliation by bringing in opposition leaders into her administration. Opposition politicians who joined her initial administration included Minister of Transport Jeremiah Salonte, Minister of Education Joseph Cordo, and Ambassador to the United Nations Nathaniel Barnes. Sirleaf also appointed several women to high-level posts in her administration, with female ministers initially leading the ministries of finance, law, commerce and industry, gender and development, and youth and sports. Sirleaf said that while she had planned on appointing an all-female cabinet, she had been unable to find qualified female candidates for every position. Upon her inauguration, Sirleaf promised that she would impose a zero-tolerance policy on corruption within the government. Despite this, critics have argued that corruption remains rampant within Sirleaf's administration. Information Minister Lawrence Broppoli was sacked in 2008 over allegations that he had stolen more than $200,000 in state funds, while Internal Affairs Minister Ambuli Johnson, Sirleaf's brother, was dismissed in 2010 after the disappearance of funds for county development. Sirleaf herself has acknowledged that corruption in government remains, noting that her zero-tolerance policy was hampered by the need to pass major economic reforms through the legislature, a goal that would have been impeded by significant anti-corruption legislation and prosecutions. However, Sirleaf has rejected claims that she has failed to fight corruption, 
pointing to the establishment of the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission and the restructuring of the General Auditing Commission. Sirleaf dismissed her entire cabinet from office on 3 November 2010, promising to reassemble the cabinet in as short a time as possible. She argued that the move was taken to give her administration a clean slate in preparation for the final year of her term, though critics argued that the move was aimed to bolster her chances at re-election by confronting corruption in her administration. By early December 2010, Sirleaf had reconstituted her entire cabinet, replacing seven of her 19 ministers. International Image Forbes magazine named Sirleaf as the 51st most powerful woman in the world in 2006. In 2010, Newsweek listed her as one of the 10 best leaders in the world, while Time counted her among the top 10 female leaders. That same year, The Economist called her arguably the best president the country has ever had. In 2010, Sirleaf released her first book, This Child Will Be Great, Memoir of a Remarkable Life by Africa's First Woman President. In 2018, Johnson Sirleaf founded the Ellen Johnson Sirleaf Presidential Center for Women and Development, which aims to be a catalyst for change across Africa by helping unleash its most abundant untapped power, its women. In 2019, Director General of the World Health Organization Tedros Adhanom appointed Johnson Sirleaf as the Tuhu Goodwill Ambassador for the Health Workforce. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, she stepped down from this post to serve as co-chair, alongside Helen Clark, of the WHO's Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response, IPPPR. Also in 2020, she was appointed to the Development Advisory Council of the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation. In addition, Johnson Sirleaf holds a number of paid and unpaid positions, including the following. Africa Europe Foundation, AEF, member of the high-level group of personalities on Africa-Europe relations. Brenthurst Foundation, member of the advisory board. MasterCard Foundation, member of the board of directors. In addition to her Nobel Prize, President Sirleaf is the recipient of numerous honors, including Gold Medal of the President of the Italian Republic, 2006. Africa Prize for Leadership for the Sustainable End of Hunger, 2006. National Reconciliation Award, 2006. International Woman of the Year, 2006. International Republican Institute Freedom Award, 2006. National Civil Rights Museum Annual Freedom Award, 2007. National Democratic Institute Harriman Award, 2007. Bishop T. Walker Humanitarian Award, 2007. FAO CERDS Medal, 2008. Golden Plate Award, 2008. International Women's Leadership Award, 2008. International Crisis Group Fred Kimney Award for the Prevention of Deadly Crisis, 2008. James and Eunice K. Matthews Bridge Building Award, 2008. American Academy of Achievement Golden Plate Award, 2008. Fuch Grand Cross Award, 2009. Friend of the Media Award, 2010. The African Gender Award, 2011. The Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace Disarmament and Development, 2012. In 2010, The Economist called her the best president the country has ever had. One of six Women of the Year, Glamour, 2010. 10 Best Leaders in the World, Newsweek, 2010, and Top 10 Female Leaders, Time, 2010. The Most Powerful Woman in Africa, Forbes Africa, 2011. According to Forbes 2012, President Sirleaf has been ranked among the top 100 most powerful women in the world. She remains an icon to young ladies in Africa and the world at large. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and realized that it was essential for Helen Johnson to survive that coup as she would go on to make history for African women. Are you of the same school of thought? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and also turn on notifications.